Hey Jason, so in this clip we're going to be going over a proof uh, that shows that uh, the limit is x approaches 0 of sine x over x equals 0. We're going to be using the squeeze theorem and uh, the area models to help you uh, understand why this, this limit holds, okay? So um, what we're going to start out with is with a sector of, of a circle and then with a uh, uh, two triangles. So if you take a look at this construction I have right here, uh, let's say we have a sector in this portion of the portion of this sector is angle X. Uh, what we have, we can create a triangle in here, we can create a sector, and then we can create a bigger triangle. All right. So I, ex I extracted all three uh, shapes so that you can distinctly see how I'm going to generate your areas. Okay, so this angle right here is X. This angle right here is x, and this angle right here is x. These are all extracted from these three. We have two triangles and a sector, okay? So this is a triangle, a right triangle to be specific. This is a sector, and then this is also a triangle, okay? Note that this is a right triangle, and this is also a right triangle. All right, now you need to remember the area of... Um, of shapes in order to do this proof. The area of a triangle, remember area is uh, one half base times height. Area of a sector is equal to um, theta r uh, square over two. And then um, for a, tri a right triangle, the same story as the first one, area is equal to one half base times height, okay? So let's take a look at the first triangle. Since this is x and we're on the circle, uh, unit circle to be specific, uh, let's say the radius of the circle is 1. So in the unit circle, we know what the x and the y components are, right? Because the hypotenuse is 1, the uh, opposite right here, using um, souls is going to be uh, sine x, okay? The opposite is going to be sine x. And then the adjacent right here is going to be cosine x, all right? So guess what? This is equal to the base of the triangle, and this piece right here is equal to the height of the triangle. So for our first shape, the area is simply 1 half base times height. The base is cosine x, the height is sine x. So the area is going to be 1 half of cosine x sine x. Okay, so that's the area for the first shape. Now let's look at a sector. Using this formula right here, we know that uh, the radius of the circle is 1, right? So this is 1, this is 1. Circle radius 1. And our angle is x, okay? So theta equals x and r equals 1. If I plug that into this formula, a equals theta r squared over 2, which is the radian formulation of the area of a sector, um, our area is going to become x times 1 square over 2. And then when you simplify it further, you're going to have uh, 1 over 2x, or just x over 2. All right? And then for our last triangle, we know that this is 1, and that forces this length right here to be tan. This entire length right here is tan x. Tan x. Okay? So our area... For this triangle, area is going to be one half the base, which is one, times the height, which is tan x. Okay, and then um, if you work that out, the area is going to become tan x over two. You see the difference between this triangle and this triangle. For this triangle, the hypotenuse is one. Okay. But this one, the adjacent is 1. That's why the height right there is tan x. If you use Sokatoa, you basically see how, how it works. So the area for this triangle is tan x over 2. All right? All right, so let's go ahead, uh, and we're going to use this area. So just, let me just explain this a little bit further, just in case you're confused. Um, if you think about Sokatoa, Toa, uh, tan x is what? Tan x is opposite, which is tan x, over adjacent, which is 1. So we just see that tan x is basically equal to tan x. Okay? So basically, this height right here is tan x. All right. Now, if you look at this area models, you can clearly see that this area 
is less than this area and this area is less than this area. You can clearly see that here. The smallest area is the first right triangle followed by the sector and then the outer triangle has the biggest area, okay? So if that's the case with the, your uh, geometric representation, then the equations that represent the area should also follow the same pattern. So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that if this is area one, this is area two, and this is area three, what I'm trying to say is area one is less than area two, and area two and area one are both less than area three. Okay? So what is area one? Area one is one half uh, cosine x sine x. Area two is x over two, and area three is tan x over two. All right. Now let's do some uh, algebra on, on the. I mean, use some trig identities on area area three. What is tan x? You remember tan x is sine of a cosine, right? So we have one over two cosine x sine x is less than x over two is less than uh, one half sine x over cosine x. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to um, all right so what we're going to do is we're going to split them apart. We're going to take the first two generate an inequality the second to generate an inequality then we're going to reassemble it okay so you looking at this I know that area one is less than area two so that tells me that one half cosine x sine x is less than x over two so I just extracted the, the first two okay this inequality holds true if we do two at a time it's much easier to follow all right, so what can I do here? Um, I can multiply both sides of my inequality by 2, multiply by 2 on both sides, and then that gives me cosine x, sine x is less than x, and then I can divide both sides by cosine x, divide by cosine x, and divide by cosine x, and then that yields uh, sine x is less than x over cosine x okay so right now we found an, a function that is an upper bound for sine x so let's keep this in mind i'm so yeah so yeah so let's keep this in mind I, let's even make a further alteration to this inequality i can multiply by uh one over x both sides by one over x and then you notice that this x cancels out, and then we're going to have um, sine x over x is less than 1 over cosine x. Okay, that's more like it. So let's keep this in mind. Um, now, I'm going to shift my attention to the fact that area 2 is less than area 3. So now let's focus on these two parts of the equation. So I'm going to have, I know x over 2 is less than one half sine x over cosine x. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is multiply both sides by two to get rid of that fraction. So I'm going to have uh, x is less than sine x over cosine x. All right, and then um, I can multiply both sides by cosine x. Multiply by cosine x. And I multiply by cosine x. And then I'm going to be left with uh, x cosine x is less than sine x. Alright? And then next I can divide both sides by x. Divide by x. Divide by x. And then I'll have cosine x is less than sine x over x. All right, so here we have an upper bound for cos for sine x over x. Here we have a lower bound. So if I combine these two inequalities, uh, we know that cosine x is less than sine x over x, and we also know that sine x over x is less than one over cosine x. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and take the limit um, as x approaches zero of the entire equation of all three sides. So I'm going to take 
the limit as x approaches 0 of cosine x, and then the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, and then the limit as x approaches 0 of 1 over cosine x. Okay? In this piece right here, I'm going to have cosine 0 as less than. Let's leave this limit in the center alone because that's our ultimate goal. We want to see what the constraints on this limit are. Okay? Limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. And then the last one, we just plug in 0 for cosine. We have 1 over cosine 0. Okay? So what is cosine 0? Cosine 0 is 1 as less than the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x. And then 1 over 0 is 1, so 1 over 1 is just 1. Okay? So we can see that this sine x over x is sandwiched between 1 and 1. Okay? So we can apply this squeeze theorem here. Since this function is between 1 and 1, it follows that. So by the application, application, of the squeeze theorem, it follows that follows that the limit as x approaches zero of sine x over x equals one. Because if a, if a function is sandwiched between one and one, that function has to be one. Okay. So there you have it. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please subscribe to my channel uh, for future updates. You can uh, share with your friends via Facebook or Twitter the contents of this video. Uh, more videos can be found on microsoft.com. Thanks again and have a wonderful day.